Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ahabita fillah A question was asked I hope this message finds you well There's been recent controversy with brother Mufti Munir Especially after his recent visit to the UK I'm not seeking fitna inshallah I'm truly sincere in writing this and seeking clarification. I've benefited from many of the brothers' lessons, questions and answers, etc. One of the points mentioned about him is that he is sitting with the people of innovation, giving talks at one or many of their masajid, made claims about the scholars not caring and claim that the Salaf differed in fundamentals of Aqidah. He has connections to Ikhwanism, uh, meaning Ikhwan al-Muslimin, not connected with the scholars, doesn't refer to them who, who has given him Tazkiyah. His claims that the Salaf, earlier generations, narrated from Ahl Bid'ah. I know the brother is imperfect and he has made mistakes. But me as a Muslim who is still learning, do I continue to take from him? May Allah aid you, brother, in making a video about these issues in general from an objective point of view, as well as speaking about the brother and his connections to these claims in a manner that isn't backbiting but clarification. Or is it that this can be taken to one of the scholars in a statement given, Barakallah Fikum? First and foremost, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al nafi ruskin tayyibu amal al mutaqabbilin. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bless us with fearing Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya yuladina amanu etakullaha haqqa tukati wa la tumutunna illa wa anta muslimun. Ya yuan nasa takurubukum aladi khalakukum min nafsin wahida wa khalaka minha zojaha wa betha minhuma rijalin kathiru wa nisa'a wa taqullah aladi tasalun wa bihi wa l'arham inna Allah kana alaykum ratiba Ya yuladina amanu wa taqullaha wa qulu qawlin sadeeda That's the shahid. O you who believe, say that which is truthful. يُسْلِحْ لَكُمْ مَعْمَالَكُمْ It will help you rectify your deeds. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذَنُوبَكُمْ And it will be a forgiveness for you. So speaking the truth is that وَسِيلَ to nothing but خَيْرِ and taqwa. So, as the questioner asked, about the brother Muhammad Munir, I've got to say that I don't usually involve myself in these things, but since it was asked, and I had a feeling that it would be asked, it's almost as if I expected it. And many, several brothers had sent some things that were written about him recently uh, from particular individuals attacking his character. And I will have to say, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins that my view of Muhammad Munir has changed a bit. And what I said before, I have to say that my love for him has only increased. And that is because when you see those being successful at calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the tarbiyah that we got from our ulama, like Imam al-Wadi, Allah yarhamahu wa ghayrihim kathir, and Imam Abdul Muhsin al-Abad. These a'imma. This is how they taught us. They taught us this kind of tarbiyah, that we should love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you see someone from the sunnah, even if they make a mistake, then advise them. But not to just write books about them, make video clips and destroy them. We're talking about people who call to the book and the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Because if you truly love the da'wah to Ahl sunnah كما قال Imam Muqbil, what is the da'wah of Ahl sunnah It should not be a call to me. It should not be a call to my group and my clique. And if you're not down with my clique, I'm going to arrest you and I'm going to attack you and I'm going to belittle you or because you have a mistake. But what did Imam Muqbil say? قال da'wah to Ahl sunnah da'wah to Ali Kitabillah, wa min, min Kitabillah, min Kitabillah, 
دعوت أهل السنة دعوتهم من كتاب الله إلى كتاب الله ومن سنتي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى إلى سنتي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. This is what our Sheikh said. He said the دعوة أهل السنة is a دعوة to the Book of Allah from the Book of Allah from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. Meaning it's to the Book and the Sunnah. It's not to individuals and personalities, and it's not to cliques, and it's not to falsehood. But rather, Ya Yuladina Amanu, it's Allah. Oh, you who believe, fear Allah. So that's what we first have to put in our mind when we deal with these kind of issues. Do we fear Allah in what we're saying? We're going to be held accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I run someone and I do it unjustly, I'm going to be held accountable. I think about even Dr. Qadi when I speak about him. Or when I have spoken about him, or Nu'man, or the one guy who always prophesizes about the dollar, I forget his name, and I think it's South Africa. I think about that. You have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you're going to be held accountable. Even Faisal Jamaiki, a takfiri, I have to fear Allah with him. I can't lie about him. I have to speak the truth. And so, Ahabat Tafillah, let's get into this question a bit, and we'll do our best to be brief, and may Allah bless us with. Uh, so Imam Muhammad said Rahimullah Ta'ala I'lam rahimakallah Innahu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al-ula al-ilm Wa ma'rafat Allah wa ma'rafat al-Nabi Wa ma'rafat al-Din al-Islam bi adilla Al-Thani al-Amal al-Bi Al-Thalith al-Da'wat al-Ilay Al-Rabi al-Sabr ala adafi So Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Rahimullah Ta'ala He said no And may Allah have mercy upon you That it's an uh, obligation for things uh, the first thing is knowledge. And knowledge is uh, knowing Allah, uh, knowing His Prophet وسلم, and knowing the uh, religion of Islam with its textual pro proofs. So first and foremost, we should busy ourselves with knowledge. And we should respect and have love for those who call to knowledge. Ilm al sahih Ilm where it's masdar, its origin is from the book and the sunnah. And we need to practice. May Allah forgive us of our many shortcomings. Athalath the da'wah to relay. And then give da'wah. Arabi asabar ala adafi. And then be patient upon that da'wah. So, this janib of what I'm saying, this aspect of what I'm talking about now, is probably more relevant to those people doing da'wah. Like the brother Muhammad Munir, half of the Allah Ta'ala. That he has to be patient on this path, and he knows better than I do on how steep of a path it is to seek knowledge and how steep it is giving da'wah because all your enemies will come against you. Even so-called people who were your brothers at one time and you sat in the same halaqat, you sat with the same ulama, they will turn against you for various reasons. It could be jealousy. It could be because you're young and some of them have gotten older and maybe less relevant, perhaps. It could be because, plain and simple, they don't have as much knowledge as you. So there's going to be reasons for jealousy. And I'm telling you, no matter what some of those individuals are saying, I know particular individuals that are speaking about him. I know of them. And I don't know anything about where they studied. There is no history of it anywhere. It's only that they come to certain places, sit with ulama for a little bit, whereas these people sat with those same ulama walk better than them and many more for years under those beards, under those white beards, years. And then you're going to say and bring controversy. The next point I want to mention, they say, by attempting to belittle him, some of the people say he's a Khwani. They say that he sits with Ahla Bida. They say uh, he's Mumeya. All of these terminologies. You have to have knowledge to be able to discern these things, number one. Number two, because if you're a lay person to involve yourself in this, you can't distinguish. You don't even know what the methodology of Akhwana Muslim means. Does Akhwana Muslim mean have an Aqidah? No, they don't, in fact. Because Akhwana Muslim is really a political organization with a certain minhaj in da'wah because there may be some that have 
Salafi in most of their aqidah. Or as others may be pure takfiri. Some are Sufi and grave worshippers. But they fall under this jama'ah for their political and other qawaid that they accept. So we have to be able to distinguish haq between batil, batil. And what we have is we have so many people speaking about our dua these days. They don't know anything about duabit. They don't know anything about shurut. And they don't know anything about making a hukum. Meaning, they don't know the criterion for a lot of these messiah. You mentioned issues. There's no way I could talk about these issues and just make it black and white. No, don't sit with Ahad Bid'ah. We know Kathra to, to, uh, of, of statements of the Salaf, which make tahrim of sitting with Ahad Bid'ah. That's the asl. But is there the wabit in principles? Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, and that takes Elm to be able to distinguish those things, to know if and when it's permissible. Is there greater benefit, not by sitting and just enjoying and engaging with them, but no, going to their masajid and giving them dawah. And how many of the ulama, this issue keeps coming up. Why don't you take the kalam of Imam Fozan? Why don't you take the, 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 the statements of Imam Abdul Mursin? Why don't you take the, the statements of so many ulama? Of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Sheikh Suleiman al Rahili, Sheikh Ibrahim al Rahili, Sheikh Kathir, Kathir, Kathir. We could just go on. But instead, the people want to ask the same questions and they want to just take on to the same fitna and benefit from these Talibat al Ilm and Mashaykh. And why is it, you have to ask yourself, why is it certain individuals, they're speaking about other people who take from the same, have the same methodology, and if they make a mistake, or if they perceive they make a mistake, because that's a whole other issue, and that takes elm. Again, it's hard to talk about these issues unless you have knowledge to be able to discern each one of those Messiah. And that, why are they not spending their efforts in their juhud talking about the seculars who are overrunning the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right now? And the, the, how many Muslims are so washed out in their deen that they love when Muslims are wearing bathing suits as fashion models. They praise them and say there's nothing wrong where Muslims are so confused. And I'm talking about in the, 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 the lands of Tawheed and otherwise that they, they don't know, uh, you know, they debate you about music, they debate you about Wahdata uh, Adyan, about one religion with the world faiths and all kind of issues. But we're not dealing with that. Instead, we're, we're busy trying to destroy the character of one another so we can be the only ones left. This is what I perceive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Listen to how the Salaf of Salih was Ridwan Allahi alayhim. Listen to this narration. يقول إمام يونس بن عبيد البصري رحمه الله تعالى he died 139 uh, هجري he said العجب من 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 يدعو اليوم للسنة وعجب منه المجيب إلى السنة and this you'll find in شرح السنة لإمام البابهاري so إمام يونس بن عبيد رحمه الله تعالى he said it's strange to find one who calls to the sunnah in this time period. And he died 1,300 years ago, subhanAllah. And he was saying this. And he said it is even stranger that to find those who accept the sunnah. And this is so true. How much more true is it in our time? So why is it when we find people who call to the book and the sunnah, we look for every microscopic mistake or issue and we spend our efforts trying to destroy them when in your question you just listed all these benefits you gain from him what confusion is there the confusion is is you're listening to people who are giving you no benefit Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said rahimahullah ta'ala wa ahlu sunnah naqawatu muslimin fuhum khair al-nas lil-nas Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, and he said also in uh, Aqidat al-Wasatiyah, he mentioned that Ahl-Sunnah is the most merciful to, to the people. 
and they're the best of the people towards the people. This is the characteristic of one of the sifat of Ahl Sunnah. Not that they're the, 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 the most severe and the most uh, 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 hated and the most and the most prevalent in spreading hatred amongst the people. That wasn't what Shaykh al-Islam uh, said or mentioned. So I want to end to make this very clear because Imam Fozan was asked something similar to this. The question was, <coughs> how do we deal with the mistake of so-and-so? And this is not saying that uh, Muhammad Munir had a mistake. But this is just showing you. And his, his answer includes and should be sufficient in this question, in your question. So, the Sheikh said, Imam Fozan rahimahullah ta'ala said, we advise you with having taqwullah and continuing in seeking knowledge and being eager in doing so and acting upon what Allah taught you and calling to Allah and teaching the people what you have learned and abandoning the bickering that is taking place amongst the students. The bickering, insulting, and the sowing of seeds of discord such that they split apart the ummah and split apart the students saying beware of so-and-so, do not sit with so-and-so, do not read to so-and-so, this is not allowed. If so-and-so has made a mistake, you advise him privately. SubhanAllah. Isn't that, doesn't that suffice you right there? And don't you see? Look at the destructiveness of certain people's dawah. It, it is amazing. Within one year's time, how many people have been taken off the sunnah? And I'm talking about ulama. Like armies of ulama have been, have been now relegated to being mubtadiyah over some small, some small issues of disagreeing over a ruling on a particular individual. Ulama that people said, Alama yesterday, and they destroy him now and speak about him and say he's worse than, than all the other Muqtadiyah before for the Dawah. Who's really worse for the Dawah? Who's really worse for the Dawah? The Hizbis are laughing. Then he said, as for spreading this mistake amongst the people and to warn against him while he is an alim or a student or a righteous man, though he has made a mistake, then this spreading of the mistake is not required. And then he mentioned where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily those who like that the crime of illegal sexual intercourse should be propagated amongst those who believe they will have a painful torment in this world and in the hereafter. And Allah knows and you know not. So that lets us know anyone who spreads fitna amongst the believers, who wants to see that they actually, you know, have a website dedicated to it, or a forum, or a WhatsApp group, or a Google group, or a Yahoo group dedicated to destroying Ahl Sunnah and splitting the Muslims in general, they need to beware. And so then the Sheikh said, what is obligatory is for the Muslims to advise each other. What is obligatory is mutual love between the Muslims, and especially the students, and especially with the ulama. Respecting the ulama, not recommending some of them, and warning against some of them, this is a reason for much evil, and a reason for bickering and hating, and a reason for fitna. Avoid these matters, jazakumullah khairan, and be as uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the saying of Allah, and verily, this, is your relig this religion is one religion. And... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and also is paraphrased, and do not be like those who split apart and differed after the clear signs came to them, and it is they who have a painful torment. So then the Shaykh said, be eager towards achieving harmony. Be eager towards advising one another. Be eager towards cooperating upon righteousness and taqwa. And beware of what will split apart the Muslims, especially in this time. The Muslims now are in need of coming together based on the book and the sunnah. This uh, are in need of cutting off argumentation between them. Are in need of cooperating upon righteousness and taqwa. And do not be helpers of the enemy and dispersing the Muslims and dividing the Muslims. If splitting takes place with the ulama and students, who will be left for the ummah? And that's what I ask you. So if you take off this brother from the sunnah because of something you perceive as mistakes, who do you have left? You're just going to keep chopping away because 
I promise you, I personally have no doubt, and it's only, everything is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. I don't know the future, but what I have seen and witnessed in the da'wah for some years now, it will be the same. We see ulama that we never thought. And I want to give you an example. The way it used to be when I lived in Medina, we used to have the dora. And I'll tell you, the ulama that I used to sit with, that it was just nothing like for us. It's just like, oh, I think I'll just go sit here. And who would be there? Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi would be the, introducing it. Uh, Sheikh Obaid would be there. Sheikh uh, Abdurazak al Bedr would be there. Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi would be there. Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari would be there. Sheikh Obeida Jabri would be there. Sheikh Ibrahim Rahali would be there. Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, I said. Sheikh, who else? Sheikh, uh, Sheikh uh, Suhaimi. Sheikh Abdul Salam Suhaimi. Sheikh Ali uh, Tawajri. They would all be there at the same forum. Now there's no way you would see that. For those who live in Medina, they know what I'm talking about. That Dora doesn't even exist anymore. Why the Dora to Qiblatain? Why? Because of the fitna that broke out between Mashaikh. So what about our students? Is this what you want? Do you want to go to the Masajid in the UK? And you can only go to this one, but if you go to this one, you're a Muqtadi according to people. And that there's no one on the Sunnah left? Look at the splitting, and I want you to observe those from the UK. I, I don't live in the UK, but I get so many comments and messages from brothers and sisters on the ground in the UK who tell me about Whole masjids that were Salafi are now off the Sunnah and they're running these Salafis and these Salafis are attacking this one and this one and this one and they're not even considered the main crew of Salafis. Subhanallah. Every group rejoices in that which they have. And who's going to be successful? Only the Hezbollah. Only the party of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who call sincerely to Allah in his book and the and to the to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in accordance with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam according to the Madhab of the Salaf. Now I know that I went off track a bit, but I think what I said hopefully is clear that there is really no fitna. It's not a new fitna because he, I'm sure, is aware wherever he goes, there's going to be a ta'ifa, a group of people who are going to be there to attack him and to observe him, especially go to the UK. Unfortunately, the UK can, was once a member of, of Sunnah, in a sense, uh, as far as the, uh, you know, a lot of people gaining some introductory knowledge about Salafiyah and getting in contact with ulama. The UK was, was, uh, took precedence in the past. But now the fitna, but they also took precedence in the fitna. They're also really good at destroying the lives of people and destroying whole mes masajid and organizations and so forth. And I ask you, is it based on the book and the sunnah? Is it based on the du wabit and kuwaid? Or is it based on hawa and jealousies, money issues, women issues? Just, per, you know, issues of hisbiya. You're not with us. So you must be against us. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wasallam.